everybody. This is Chris. And Kathy. We wanted to take a minute to thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate every listener and are grateful for this platform. Please help us share our vision by subscribing to our show through your favorite streaming app. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Petability Podcast. You can also support the show by making a donation. Simply go to our show notes and click the link at the bottom of the page of any episode. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to Petability. I'm your host, Kathy Simons. And I'm your host, Chris Cranston. Our podcast provides interviews and information to help your pets live their best lives. Good afternoon, Chris. How are you today? Kathy, I'm doing very well today. Spring is in the air, full of energy. And as always, I am super excited to talk to our next guest. I'm really excited to speak with our next guest because she has a deaf and partially blind dog who does all kinds of things. It's just so exciting and so enriching. So I'm really excited to learn more about um, this dog, Wink, that we're going to be talking about today. Absolutely. And how I learned of Wink is, uh, as our listeners, our faithful mm -hmm. listeners may know, I'm out here in Massachusetts, but my dad lives in Colorado Springs, and his wife has sung Annalise de Aragon's praises for years now because she met Annalise as her own personal dog's trainer. And then I learned about Annalise's pack and especially Wink. And she said, you have to follow Wink. I mean, it's amazing. And I want Annalise to tell us uh, before the show's over about they were a contestant um, on some show talking about like amazing dogs. And uh, my dad's wife, her name is also Chris, just to make things uh, confusing or maybe simpler. But she's like, you've got to go online. You've got to vote for Wink. And so anyway, fast forward. Here we are. We finally got Annalise on the show. And so let's just get to it. Welcome to Petability, Annalise the Aragon. Welcome, Annalise. Thank you. I appreciate it. So fill in the gaps. Tell us your story. You know, how did you um, get doing what you're doing? I know that uh, I was checking out your Instagram last night and it's, uh, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, it's like incredible... Trick dogs. Uh, incredible trick dogs. Yeah. Incredible trick dogs. Right. And some amazing <laughs> things on there. So yeah. How did you get to, to where you are in life now? So uh, as a kid, I had a German shepherd. Um, basically growing up, uh, I was a, a wrestler. Uh, that's uh, kind Love of a it. strange thing for a girl to be, but I was, uh, and I practiced all the time. So I wanted a, a friend to go running with and to like cut weight with and things like that. So I got the German Shepherd and she had a bunch of issues <laughs> um, coming from, because she was a rescue, reactivity to other dogs, things like that. And so we worked on that. We fixed that. Uh, I got into trick training a, a ton because she was so smart, so amazing. Um, and then from there, I started, uh, we moved to Colorado Springs, obviously because of the training center here, the, uh, oh. training center. yep. And I got a rescue little pit bull, Prim, who is my mm -hmm. first like real trick dog and sport dog, uh, started training her at the place that I train now and decided to enter the, uh, student trainer program. Uh, and from there, it's just kind of history. I've been training for 10 years with them. I don't do as much behavior work anymore. Now I do a lot of sport work, which with my background in human sports makes a lot of sense. And that's just uh, my passion now. We do sports, we do tricks. My dogs get a lot of enrichment out of uh, training in general with me. Um, and it's fun. Yeah. I, I've seen your Instagram. It looks like a lot of fun. And I really would love to hear the story of, of how you, how did you get Wink? 
Um, how did she come to you? Did, did you rescue her? Was she already sensory impaired when you got her? So basically what happens, right, is there's um, a, a Facebook page for people who want to foster. Now, my partner is obsessed with this Facebook page, and she's always looking at the dogs uh, that are coming through. And we already had three dogs. And she saw a picture of Wink on the, the Facebook page, which is which is my job. It's it's our All Breed Rescue and Training's uh, Facebook little page. And she said, we're bringing home that dog. We're fostering that <laughs> dog. And I said, no, we are not. Um, and then she reached out to my boss and said, yeah, we were going to foster that dog. <laughs> she did a workaround. She oh, went yeah. over your head. Yeah, she went over your head. <laughs> Which is fine because she knows I'll be okay with it. So we said we would foster her. Um, basically, her story co- going into foster uh, was that her breeder, uh, whoever made her, right, brought her to an emergency vet uh, at five weeks old because her eye had uh, fallen out for some reason. I'm not sure if it was like... Oh. My trauma, God. Uh, or if it was infection or what it was, but took her into the vet. They could not um, afford to pay for the surgery to have the eye removed. And so our local humane society took her in. Now, when they took her in, they didn't realize that she was deaf uh, yet. And she really lacked bite inhibition, which meant, means that she would bite very, very hard. And so she was putting holes in people at six, seven weeks old. She couldn't hear and she only had one eye. So she ended up going on the euthanasia list. And my boss, Lauren Fox, for some reason, just saw something in her and decided that our rescue was going to give her a chance. So thank goodness. I'm I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you did. Um, I have to tell you. And Lise, when I uh, looked at Wink and saw pictures of her, especially when she was sleeping in the laundry basket, you could just, you can really feel just, she's a special girl. And I want to come down there and smush her and squish her and kiss her. I'll restrain myself, but. <laughs> yeah. So Annalise, just, just so you know, when we were brainstorming, uh, you know, what we wanted to learn from you on the, mm-hmm. for this show, Kathy says, um, and write down, Kathy is going to go kidnap Wink and <laughs> get her, you know, ASAP. as soon as possible. <laughs> oh, you would, you would want to return her right away. She and then we say that about my dog too. They take him back in five minutes. Um, it's just a feeling that I get from her when I look at her pictures about her, just this, this sort of uh, a sweetness in her soul that that's what sort of drove me to like, gosh, she's really cute. And, but you're right. I mean, the other part of that is training a dog with a sensory impairment and teaching that dog to live in your home and within the boundaries and the rules of the home isn't always easy. Um, and I've had two blind dogs and I have to say, I sometimes think that having the blind dog might be a little bit easier than the deaf dog. That's just my own thoughts about it because how do I train the dog that's deaf? And so I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, how did you how did you train Wink? So um, the important thing I think to realize when we're working with um, dogs with impairments is that they are still dogs and everything, all the training um, is still almost the same. Except, you, so you think about it like when you lure your dog into a sit. You take a treat, you put it on their nose, you lift your hand up, they put their butt on the ground. You do that a couple of times and then eventually you can take the treat out of the hand and you have a hand signal, right? You lift the hand up. We, with hearing dogs, with the hearing dog, we would say sit as we're doing that. And then eventually we can drop the hand signal. I feel pretty lucky because I never have to worry about <laughs> dropping the hand signal. It's the same training. Um, the only difference with a deaf dog is teaching a recall, of course. Because ah, yes. But everything else, all of our tr- training, it's all been the exact same. And I, I love that you say that dogs are dogs, because that's what I always tell people when they're when they're thinking or considering adopting a blind dog or, or their mm-hmm. dog has gone blind. It's you're right. The dog is still the dog um, and we can adapt to those impairments. We can ad- help our dogs adapt to those impairments. Um, and I think it's I think it's really 
great that you opened your your heart and your home to a dog with a sensory impairment. You know, because Chris and I are always talking about people who may be considering a dog with some type of sensory or physical impairment. And our our suggestion always is meet the dog. Go meet the dog. Maybe it's a good fit for you. Maybe it's not. But meet the dog. We want to encourage people to look at the dog that's blind or look at the dog that has three legs. Yeah, don't automatically dismiss them, you know, because like you said, they're they're another dog just with mm-hmm. some different sensory. Yes, absolutely. Um, and so my agility instructor at the time kind of really helped me because I was like, you know, my next dog, I really want to be a sport dog. And I would have Wink tag along with my other dog, Prim, mm-hmm. to all her agility classes. And I didn't know it at the time. But my agility instructor, because I was I was really convinced that we were going to find Wink a home, and it, I, it wasn't like an instant, this dog's never leaving. It was a, this dog is actually pretty hard. For other reasons besides her sensory impairment, she's just a extremely intelligent dog. And because she's right. extremely intelligent, she can be hard to live with. But my instructor, I'm pretty sure, was just setting me up to show me how amazing she was and just like oh yeah let's have wink do it too oh yeah let's have wink do this too oh let's try this (laughs) with wink and i was like i was like okay i guess and by the end uh you know by a couple of weeks together wink's running uh little puppy agility courses and it's starting to like work into my brain that wink can do everything that my other dogs can do right when i told that instructor that you know wink was gonna stay she was like, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness. Hey, Anna Leach, yeah. your, your agility instructor was actually shaping you, right? Exactly. Like- <laughs> exactly. Yes. So um, I have to go back to, you know, I didn't know about your history as an athlete. And uh, I, I think that's really cool. But I, I saw one uh, video on your Instagram where you had Prem on your back mm-hmm. and you were doing a push up between chairs. No, that's my girlfriend's. Oh, that's okay. Funny. One of you. <laughs> Many photos of myself. I'm like, oh my God, you know. So, she was a wrestler also. Aha. Uh-huh. Yes. Well, you both, you, yes, you you both look uh, very, very fit. And I thought that was pretty amazing and how you incorporate uh, your your pack really into, like you said, your fitness routines and, and so forth. So back back to... Wink, uh, first of all, great name. Did you name her? Did she come with that? You know, actually, no. Her name was like uh, Ziva or something when we got her. Um, but I posted on an online trick group, and I was just like, what should I name this dog? Uh, and someone said Wink, and I just was like, that's it, immediately. Yes, because she has a perma wink. She looks so yes. cute. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but what, what, what are the extent of, of her, you know, impairments, her differences? She is completely deaf Mm -hmm. and then is, is the remaining eye sighted? So she can see with the remaining eye to an extent. Ah. Uh, She can see close up very, very well, um, farther away and in the dark, she has a really hard time. Um, so say, so we've run like lure coursing with her and, um, if the wind is right and she's running in the right direction and she's being caught at the end by someone she knows, it's no big deal. If that person's farther away and the wind is blowing their scent the opposite direction, she might wig out and try to kind of run back to me because I don't know that person, even if it's my partner who she's known since she was you know eight Mm -hmm. weeks old um just because she can't see that well Um, right she does rely heavily on scent that's what i was going to say in in your example you know just shows how much uh she is reliant on scent and so you know many of us aren't thinking about the direction of the wind when we're out you know walking our dogs and you know doing things with them but that's something you probably have to pay a lot of attention to Yes. And then in terms of her deafness, I know, and I, I think it's just a good educational point for our audience that there is a genetic linkage many mm-hmm. times with white dogs and deafness. True? Yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So and she came from a very 
whoever bred her, bred her unethically. Um, I mean, that's just true because a lot of people really enjoy a pure white dog or this, you know, fancy color. And most of the puppies are going to be okay. But is it worth breeding those or that pair together to have mostly white puppies knowing that, you know, potentially a fourth of them are going to have serious issues? Yes. And, 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 and she was facing euthanasia. That was, yeah. that's the, that's the, the fate of a lot of those puppies. Right. And I was going to say in a, with an unethical breeder, you know, backyard breeder, whatever, you know, it, they would consider it like a throwaway puppy. They're just a commodity and, you know, and they, and they can afford, you know, to have a throwaway and that's just horrible. I mean, so heartbreaking. yes. I, I know that, that our listeners are just, you know, cringing now to, to think about that. Yeah. It honestly makes me wonder sometimes, like, if because, you know, it, 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 Wink's got a big following on TikTok. Wink uh, has been on, you know, some, some bigger uh, platforms. Like, if these people have ever seen her and if they go like, oh, wow, that was our puppy. Because I, I tell her story, you know. <laughs> So right. it, it just makes you wonder if they ever recognize the dog that they made <laughs> and what so, they gave away. Exactly. So let's get into, can you describe like a day in the life of, of Wink? So I, I can. Um, Wink is a tiny dictator. Uh, she has this. <laughs> An evil genius. An evil genius. <laughs> she is. She is incredibly smart. She's the smartest dog I have by far um but she will uh wake up every morning at 5 a.m and tell me that she needs breakfast um i will tell her no she does not need <laughs> breakfast and go back to bed actually the time swap was a crazy time for us before she had any health issues she was always fed once a day um now that she's fed three times a day um she gets a little bossy about when she eats uh which is Interesting because that never used to happen. Mm. Um, but actually with the time schedule change, uh, she just kept trying to go earlier and earlier in the night just because she just thinks all the rules are gone, right? right. So 5 a.m., she'll wake me up. I'll say, nope, we need another hour. Then 6 a.m., uh, she will get up. She will eat. Uh, generally, I take her on either a bike ride or a run uh, after she has eaten. Oh, wait, 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 let me interrupt. So how, how does this bike ride or run look? I mean, is she, is she tethered? Um, you know, again, I, I'm just thinking, like you said, there's no recall and, um, you know, she's, she's mostly blind. So how do you ensure her safety? So Wink actually has an incredible recall. Ah. Um, and I taught Wink from a very young age to do something that I call automatic check-ins. So every few feet that Wink walks, even when she's off leash, she will turn and she will look at me just Amazing. to see if there's the potential that she'll get paid. Treat. Nice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you never know. Uh, <laughs> or if I am going to recall her, call her back to me. Um, so Wink, Wink can go on any hike off leash with all the other dogs. Um, the only thing is that if she is out of sight, and sorry, my other dog's getting some butt scratches next to me. Um, if she's out of sight, uh, she can't recall, or if she's super fixated on like a bunny or something, um, which is where she has a vibration collar that Ooh. comes into play. She only wears it occasionally because I really don't need it. Um, but we did a lot of work to make sure that the vibration was not a scary thing, that it was extremely positive, and she just associates a big payout with the vibration. She loves it. Right uh, mm -hmm. now, when we run. Uh, or bike ride, she is actually uh, in a sledding dog type harness. Um, so we do something called cane across or bike drawing, which means that she's out ahead of me and she is pulling me along. I need a wink. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. So, yeah, she goes out, she pulls. She is generally teamed up with Prim and my little dog Niffler. Um, and uh, they kind of sandwich her in between them, and it's, it's great. She loves it. I love it because I don't have to work so hard. So, uh, Elise, do you think that, you know, being – I'm interested if she uses the other dogs a little bit as 
as cues, right? Absolutely. So if she's, yes, if she's sandwiched between the two dogs, she can she can't take uh, you know verbal cues. But if she's if she's pushed up against one dog or leaning towards the other mm-hmm. dog, she's just sort of like taking the cue from those two. Yeah. Uh, to keep going in a straight line or to keep going this way. I wonder, does she take any other cues from the other dogs? Oh, yes. Um, she knows when they hear something outside. So oh, yeah. if the dogs, because I, I, so I live out in the country. We have lots of land. We don't see people coming up on the property very often. Uh, so I actually am totally fine with my dogs barking. Because if they're barking, that means there's a coyote out there with the livestock or there's, you know, potentially someone coming onto the property that shouldn't be there. Sometimes, of course, it's just Amazon, but yeah. um, <laughs> the dogs bark, she'll get up uh, and she'll bark. She actually can really feel uh, vibrations pretty well. Mm-hmm. So if a dog is touching her and starts barking, she could feel it and she'll get up and she'll start barking. She knows. Um, but like r- with the running stuff... Um, yeah, I, I call Prim my lead dog because she knows the directionals really well. Mm-hmm. And she is always on Wink's blind side. She puts herself there. I don't put her there. Um, but she's always on Wink's blind side. Um, now, Niffler, my little dog, my little Chihuahua mix, he always goes on the other side. Um, and it's really funny to watch them because when a car comes by, he pushes right into that shoulder and she moves right on over. And she moves over. Mm. Yeah. She knows what's going so on. Smart, so smart. Um, and I want to. I'm going back to the things that Wink does. You know, I know that she does the uh, the biking with you, and I know that she's sled pulling and she does tricks. But I'm really interested in the fact that Wink does agility. Like, yeah. how? <laughs> it's amazing. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? I know that you said that your trainer had sort of shaped you into doing this, um, but I'd really like to know what it looks like when you're training. So um, the really nice thing about agility is actually it's mostly um, body language based. Okay? Your shoulders, your feet, where everything is pointing really plays into it um, a lot more than you would think. So I can be pointing at a tunnel and say jump. And even my hearing dogs are like, you're wrong. We're going to the tunnel. <laughs> We're going in. <laughs> so Wink has learned really easily. If we're running at an obstacle, take the obstacle. Um, if I'm facing a certain direction, that means uh, she's learned that if my arm is out, she takes the far obstacle. If I pull my shoulder back, she takes the closer obstacle. She really is. She's in tune. Amazing. And there are actually programs out there that are specifically made for deaf dogs and agility. It's amazing. It makes me really think, wow, our dogs are, I mean, even just the the picking up on the subtleties of you lightly moving your shoulder or your hand or the way you turn your hips, she's really in tune. I guess that all the agility dogs are in tune, but she's really in tune with that. Absolutely. She is constantly staring at me, checking in with me. Um, But that's, you know, kind of the way she was raised from from the time she was little. Uh, You watch the humans. And I, I think most dogs naturally, naturally do. And a deaf dog is going to watch you even more because they don't get the verbal cues of, oh, someone's leaving the room. Right. Or someone's doing this or the fridge opened up like, you know, my other dogs all run to the fridge as she will, too, if she's awake and she sees the other dogs running. But um, she has to pay attention. She wants to follow me everywhere. She wants to see what I'm doing. And, And she's like I said, she's really very, very intelligent and naturally. So she's like a tiny human. She's like a tiny human. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I remember when I started doing agility, uh, and I, I've said this before in shows that it really helped me because it was at that time that I learned how masterful all dogs are at watching body language. And so when I was working in a rehab sense, you know, I I became much more attuned to which way are my feet pointed, you know, am I, is my shoulder back, am I leaning forward, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, so, you know, I can see, you know, where, where it wouldn't be astronomically challenging for Wink because 
you know, we, we should be doing that at all times through our body cues and, and so forth. Cause I think dogs just naturally gravitate to that. The other thing is that I was challenged, uh, well, we all were, um, by our agility instructor to try to run courses without using any verbals so that, you know, we weren't relying on that, that we were getting better at our own skill set in terms of our bodies and orchestrating what we wanted, you know, the, the dogs to do. So, um, yeah, just cool. So, yeah, Annalisa, it makes me think, does she, how does she pick up on body language of other dogs? Do you think that she's able to, I mean, I know she has some vision, but she can't hear yips or growls or whatever, does she still, does she have any trouble interpreting the body language of other, of her other dogs in her, in her pack or other dogs that she might need on a walk? So when, um, we got her when she was a puppy, um, one of the issues that she did have was body language, uh, with other dogs. And the, her thing is she would always run up immediately, kind of standing very tall, be right in another dog's face. And she always puts her blind side to the, the sighted dog's face, um, very in their face. Now, I thought when I was, uh, when we first got her, I was actually a little worried that she might end up having some dog aggression issues. Um, because it's not normal for a puppy that's eight weeks old to walk up so confidently to an adult dog and just kind of stand there and, and be so um, kind of in your face. Normally puppies, like, they'll crawl up. They do a lot of, like, the lip licking and the wiggling. a lot of a, yeah, yes, a little wiggle. Yeah. <laughs> appeasement behavior, you know. I'm, mm. I'm a puppy. You're an adult. And Wink has never done that. He was um, brazen. Brazen. Very. Very. Uh, so then I was worried because, I, you know, uh, two female pit bulls in the same home. I was like, will this eventually be a problem? And it, it hasn't. Um, but actually, as she got older, she became the most dog appropriate dog I have ever owned. Uh, if your dog likes dogs, they will like Wink. Um, she is just easygoing. Um, if I ever have any fearful dogs that I'm working with that are scared of other dogs, they get to meet Wink. Because we can walk out in the yard, see another dog is scared, and go take a nap in the corner and wait until that dog will come up uh, and check in with her. Um, occasionally, she does still have some issues when she's playing and she's being a little too much and she has her blind side to a dog and they growl or something and, of course, she doesn't hear it. Um, so she'll, like, try to continue playing um, but if she can see that they are uncomfortable she really quickly will will stop uh, and move on um yeah so she she reads body language well she's great playing with dogs she's played with um other chris uh, mm -hmm. dog, uh many many times the small big she's appropriate with everyone i mean she, the dog even picks up on patterns of other dogs and what the other dogs are going to do. Um, she outsmarts my dogs at every turn. We, so even like things like handing out bones, right? Handing out bones to my dogs or chews of some kind, right? Everyone gets a bone. Um, Wink is so smart and she reads the other dogs and understands them so well. She will go and she will hit the door to go potty. All my other dogs, who are pretty smart dogs, but not Wink's level, they will run to the door to go potty, right? Because they love going outside. They will leave their bones and run to the door. I'll let everyone go outside because I trust my dogs. And Wink will walk out, and as soon as all the other dogs are out, turn around, run back inside, grab all the bones. She set them up. Oh, she yeah. Set them up. Or she she'll look up. outside if she wants a spot on the couch, and she'll give a little bark. And all the other dogs go and they look and Wink will run back and grab the spot that she wanted that another dog was in. It's genius. It's genius. <laughs> Master <laughs> manipulator. <laughs> she, with other dogs, yeah, she is smart. So, uh, Annalise, do you make an effort, you know, you, uh, kind of reading between the lines, it seems like you do, but maybe not. Do you make an effort to stimulate her other senses more because she is deprived of 
hearing, for example. So do you provide more tactile stimulation, you know, and touching? Do you provide uh, more olfactory, smelling? Um, do you provide different uh, taste profiles uh, to, you know, stimulate those parts of her brain? Um, so we do do nose work. Um, and she is an amazing nose work dog. I have videos, actually post them on Instagram, uh, from the time she was itty bitty doing nose work and alerting on odor. Um, so we do nose work. We do shed hunting. We've done barn hunting with her, all using her nose. Um, tactile wise, the dog loves everything new. So I know a lot of dogs like to like roll in smells and things like that. But wink if you give her a new surface, like a uh, bubble wrap or saran wrap or even like foil, she will rub her entire body over it and get the zoomies and <laughs> wrap it and, and she <laughs> it. That's interesting because I would almost think that, you know, a lot of dogs would be fearful of that. It'd be objectionable. You wouldn't want yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of dogs would be. Wink has never been fearful of anything environmentally. Mm -hmm. um, even when she was little, we would see her start to like go towards the teeter totter and we'd run over there. And if it, you know, went down, which it, you're not supposed to have puppies do teeters, um, because, for a lot of reasons, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. if it had, you know, would tip, she would just stand there like nothing happened at all. Whereas a normal puppy would like panic. Mm -hmm. Right. I wonder if. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I, I I just want to say I wonder if some of it is because she doesn't have hearing, you know, like the slamming of the teeter, you know, is so scary. Or like I took my my dog Baxter, who's uh, a little bit of a a wimp. I love him, but he's he is a wimp. And it was a a class called uh, Slippery Slopes or Slip. I think that was just a creative name, Slippery Slopes. And the whole idea was having them walk on and investigate these different surfaces and seeing where they gravitated to what they avoided and then treating them for being brave you know and putting you know a foot on like you said bubble wrap or something like that but you know a lot he's very sound sensitive so you know i wonder if she's i mean it sounds like she's just a naturally confident dog but i you know i wonder you know we always call them like disabilities but can you know there's like right for every negative there's a positive and um you know see the silver lining and so maybe you know some of this is actually works to her advantage absolutely they walk into uh, a an agility competition other dogs all hear the other dogs barking and people yelling and and she doesn't have any of that extra. Right. All that stimulation that could be just like make them cray cray. Yeah. So yeah. she could just like stay focused. And some dogs get uh, get a bit like over thresholds with a lot of that noise, you know. Um, so in this case, maybe it is. Yeah. Maybe it is uh, uh, not a disability, but an ability. <laughs> and we've talked too about like. You know, maybe doing a disservice with with any pet if you coddle them too much, and it certainly doesn't seem like you ever, you know, coddled Wink. I mean, you recognized her her differences, you embraced her for what she is, and it seemed like you were fearless, Annalise, in terms of being willing to try these things and have her do what all the other the other pets in your pack do. Yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. Uh, when I first got Wink, actually, there were some uh, AKC competitions that deaf dogs weren't allowed to do. They weren't allowed to do obedience. They were not. I think when I first got her, they weren't allowed to do rally. Um, oh, that's either. stupid. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it is really silly. Um, but I think coming from having been a female wrestler, it, uh, only wrestling boys growing up, and people saying, you know, you can't do that. And me going, uh, yes, I, I can. Watch me. Uh, that kind of similar thing happened with Wink. We started doing agility and people were like, aren't you worried about her depth perception or this or that? And um, I was like, well, we'll be worried if it actually becomes a problem. But it never did. So let's yeah. try it and see. Yep. Well, that makes me wonder too, Annalise, is there anything, you know, 
are there any other are there any safety accommodations you need to make for her in the home or when she's doing agility? No, not really. Uh, she has preferences for sure, uh, specifically on weaves. She wants she likes offside weaves mm -hmm. uh, because she can see me better. Um, but having lost an eye at five weeks old. I mean, she can catch every treat that I've ever thrown at her. She can play fetch. She can catch frisbees. She definitely does not have the depth perception issues that people would potentially assume that she would have. Yes. I think if you've had two eyes and then you have an eye taken away, that would be really startling. But she was just so young. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it speaks to... It speaks to, like you said, the adaptability, you know, the nervous system and things like that at, at a young age. You know what, Kathy? I'd like to, to take a break at this point in this podcast because there is no better time to introduce our new sponsor that has a subscription enrichment box for pets. So it is called a dog's best life box.com. That's where you can go and find it. Check it out. They have one time monthly or quarterly seasonal subscriptions. The price is right. You cannot get this type of quality product. If you were to buy it individually for this package price, if you use the promo code, Pet Pod 22, P E T P O D 22, all capital letters, you'll get a 10% discount on your order. And, and just for our listeners, a special gift that is a fantastic treat pouch that includes, it has a built in squeaker. I've never seen this out there. I mean, this company really strives to have products that you can't typically get at your local pet store or the big box store. Go to a dog's bestlifebox.com and you will not be disappointed. This is another good point in the show where we could talk about our other sponsor who I love so much because, you know, what better way to exercise your pet when the warm weather is coming by going swimming or boating? Uh, so I'd like to take a moment to talk about Heads Up Pets Water Collar, because I feel so passionate about this product because this product is saving lives. There are over 5,000 dogs every year that drown in, in swimming pools. And that number does not include dogs that drown in lakes, rivers, streams, or ponds, or the ocean when they're boating. And so I feel really passionate about this, you know, and uh, one of the things that's so great about the Heads Up Pets Water Collar is, you know, your life vest is great, but it, the one thing it can't do is keep your dog's head and, and nose above the water. So please check out our friends at Heads Up Pets Water Collar. When ordering, use promo code PETPOD22, that's P-E-T-P-O-D-22, to get your 10% discount and help support the show. So, Annalise, what would you say to people who would see Wink and go, I want a Wink? <laughs> I, I want wink or I want a wink. I want a deaf dog or I want a deaf dog that's partially blind. What would you, what would your advice be for them? Um, I would say find a reputable rescue. Um, just like reputable breeders, there are reputable rescues. Um, there are some rescues that are specific actually to deaf and blind dogs. Um, Keller's cause is a great rescue um, to go through check them out see they also have training resources for deaf and blind dogs um i say go for it i yeah. say adopt that dog uh as long as there aren't other behavioral and potential health issues um that you aren't ready for right and a reputable rescue um will help to uh, kind of temperament and test to make sure that those issues aren't yeah. present. Then they can help you integrate the dog, I think, into the family as well. But I, I think you're right. I think we shouldn't overlook the dog. But And I agree 100%. But what I'm also hearing is that on the converse side, the flip side, you don't have to be a world-class trainer like Annalise to have a deaf and blind dog. You know, she happens happens to do this stuff and have these resources. And Wink 
gets to, you know, experience a much broader, richer life than, than most of our dogs ever would. She sure but, does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, um, but you know, I guess I'm hearing also that, like you said, with resources and a commitment and just learning, um, that, that any of us can, can find that right match. And, uh, and even if they are sensory impaired or differently abled. Yeah. So yeah, I pets that are deaf all the time. They're great pets. They're just normal dogs. Right. <laughs> yeah. And Kathy's had a lot of experience with, with blind dogs, but I've actually had a few dogs that were deaf, um, but fully sighted. And so the hand signals, you know, like you said, Annalise, they have to be looking at you, of course, and, you know, and you get their attention, but the hand signals worked awesome. And I think I'm a pretty demonstrative person anyway. And uh, I remember in my human PT years, um, I worked at a health center and uh, one of my patients was deaf and he asked for me to be his therapist because, you know, none of us signed or anything, but through my body language, as we've talked about, and, you know, lip reading and all of that, we communicated very well. And so I think that that's definitely possible um, and not as difficult as you might think with, with a deaf dog. So of all the things that Wink does, what is her favorite? What brings her the most joy? Because Kathy and I always talk about the emotional lives of our pets and how we should all be concerned with that and figuring out what brings them the most joy. What is her, her most favorite thing to do? So I I really do think that it's a tie between three things. Okay. So her favorite thing I think to do um, is agility because she likes the partnership. She likes working with me. Um, She actually really enjoys the class uh, with pe- other people, you know, cheering her on or she gives spirit fingers as her good job. So she loves looking at everyone and kind of doing like, a, I did a good job. Um, <laughs> but she really enjoys nose work. Um, I think she would actually enjoy it more if I enjoyed nose work more. Mm. So I think there's a, a part of her that just loves nose work, loves using her nose. But I do think that she can definitely sense that it's not my favorite thing. And that's my own problem. I oh, like to so Annalise, I have to interject here. This is Kathy's in because Kathy loves nose work. Oh, I love nose work. Yeah. I have a pug and um, <laughs> he's. Re- we, I know it kind of seems silly, but again, he's, he's really good at it. And, you know, when we show up to class, he's unapologetic while he stands there waiting his turn between like three German shepherds and a beagle. And he's just like this little pug. Uh, but I think it's a great activity for the dogs. But yeah, it can be a little bit, maybe not as exciting as agility, maybe not as sexy as agility, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, she loves it. And I think most dogs get a lot, a, a huge benefit from nose work. Um, but I am a selfish kind of control freak <laughs> and I really want to be involved. Yeah. Uh, mm. and it's kind of hard for me to hand over the reins completely. Yep. Um, yeah. It, it is. So, and sometimes I have to stand completely still for like a minute or two, which is torture. <laughs> it is. It's, it's it's like impulse control on the human's part. Exactly. We exactly. ask that of our dogs so often, but exactly. it's hard to do it yourself. Um, but she loves that. I, I do it with her just because she loves it. If she didn't enjoy it so much, I would not do nose work. Um, uh-huh. And then lure coursing or uh, uh-huh. so fast cat. She loves... Uh, doing flirt pole, any type of chase. She, she wants to do it. She loves it. Uh, it's something that she really enjoys. Um, again, I think that it's something that she would like a lot more if I could like keep up with her and play the same game with her. Yeah. But boy, she, she loves it. It is amazing. She loves it. Um, it's just like this freedom to run. Uh, and hunt something. And, you know, the really interesting thing is, too, uh, is that I actually, I have bunnies on my farm. We do colony style raising, so they're um, loose in an area together uh, because I don't want them caged. Um, And she can go out and she can be with them. She can be with my chicken. She can be with everything. But a plastic bag moves, man, and she is after it. She's on it. (laughs) Yeah. 
Link, saving the world from plastic bags, one plastic bag at a time. (laughs) That's discrimination, right? Like knowing what's appropriate and what's not. I mean, that's, again, just crazy for me to think about. Do you ever, um, have you ever had, and this has happened a a fair amount to some of my friends who have blind dogs or someone will come to them and, and, you know, that, you know, they're, you know who they are, the unsolicited um, people who love to give you, you know, their opinions and their, their advice. But I've had people who have blind dogs have people approach them and go, Oh, that poor dog. Oh, that poor, poor dog. Um, and it's happened to me on a few occasions. Um, has that, has that happened at all, Annalise, to you? Oh, so often. Uh. <laughs> um, not just because, uh, so of course there's the eye issue. Right. Um, but right now she's having a, a bit of a weight issue. Uh, because she's gone through some medical issues uh, in the past couple of months. So she's a little on the thinner side. So people are constantly asking me uh, if I just rescued her. And I'm like, no, I didn't just rescue her. And I've got people who come up to me and will tell me, will tell me that my dog must have been from a dog fighting ring or that she's obviously a bait dog survivor. And I'm like, no, she's not. So don't no. try to put that on on her. She's and if they really knew Wink, they wouldn't feel sorry for her at all. She's living a great life, better than a lot of other dogs that have. She has no idea, injury, right? She has no idea that she can't hear, or that she has yeah. one eye, or that she has one eye. She doesn't know, she and doesn't she doesn't know. care. She doesn't look in the mirror. I, I think people are, are very well meaning, um, and you see it a lot. Uh, sorry, my dog is coughing on me. Um, <laughs> But you see it a lot, especially online and in person, um, with skinny dogs, with dogs who maybe have scars from something, uh, dogs who maybe even dogs who are overweight. I, I don't think it's anyone's, it, it shouldn't be anyone's business to come up and tell you that your dog needs to be different. You don't know that person could have adopted that obese dog from the shelter and that dog might be on a diet and. Yep. They don't need a bunch of people coming up and saying, right, your dog's right. fat. You know, right. if, if people would come to me with uh, genuine questions with my blind dog, I'm happy to answer them. Um, and I try to my best, as long as I'm not too, you know, not irritated, uh, to show them, look what my dog can do. My dog can do just about anything your dog can do. Watch, you know, here's my blind dog. Watch this. He can sit. He can spin. He can down. He can, he can walk with me. He can walk in a straight line. He follows commands. Um, and so it's, it's great if you can educate them. Um, but if not, then just walk away. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Avoid confrontation. Right. So as we're wrapping up this show, which has been awesome and so fun, um, tell us more about when Wink was nominated for the amazing dog thing. How did that happen? What was, what was it? So, um, Basically, uh, there was a, a, contest, a contest a couple of years ago for world's most amazing dog. And not, not America's most amazing dog, the world's most amazing dog. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> and people just got a kick out of the fact that she could do agility and she had a couple of tricks that we posted. So there was like a, a big voting where people uh, were were voting the most amazing tricks. So they did a, a voting and the top, I think it was the top like 16 dogs got to uh, be, be featured and have like a celebrity panel judge them. Um, Wink did pretty good. She- The Wink made the top 16. Yes, she did okay. not make the- the, or she, of course, she did not win. Um, there were some amazing dogs. Dogs <laughs> that could do handstands and all that. And actually, we can do a handstand, interestingly enough. Um, she has amazing tricks. Uh, but the, the Chihuahua did end up winning. I think, uh, George Lopez really enjoyed Wink, though, which was, which was nice. Nice. Uh, and yeah, it, it well, was a great experience for sure. Sure. And, and it's, you know, it sounds like you embrace that stuff. And then Kathy in my book, I mean, just being nominated, you've won. I mean, think about of all the dogs in the world and you were amongst the top 16. I mean, winner, winner, chicken dinner. 
<laughs> yeah, actually, my other dog was was pretty close up there too, um, Prim for for doing a bunch of cool tricks. You know, pit bulls are very uh, people don't expect much from them. Mm. When they can do amazing things, people they're an extremely intelligent breed. Um, I don't know why we sell them short in that, but they are an extremely intelligent dog. Very, very smart. We actually had a, a veterinarian um, come up to us after a performance um, at a festival and tell us that she did not know <laughs> that pit bulls had the mental capacity to do the types of tricks that we were yeah. doing. I think she just thought the Border Collies could do it because, um, you know, my dogs can jump on my back. They can yeah. balance on my feet. They can uh, jump off of me, rebound off of me, um, do handstands. Mm -hmm. They're awesome dogs and they must love it i taught uh, i have a pug and i taught him how to spin but only to the left so yeah. i'm working on the <laughs> but you, i was really you, proud of myself i was proud to grow you have room to grow kathy yeah. so <laughs> so i know i think what do you have five dogs in your pack now I do. That, yeah and pan i'm seeing a lot of uh press with pan who is your Bel belgian malinois mm -hmm. she looks amazing and you know talk about expectations you know those types we have very high expectations for yes yes and yeah. actually so pan i like everyone's like oh pan's so smart she's such an intelligent dog when the reality is that pan is a very good worker Pan, I'm not saying Pam's not dumb, but she is a great worker. Now, Wink is a smart dog, right? Uh, He's like, I get all the other dogs and humans to work for me. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> He's uh, on the internet right now ordering stuff. <laughs> I, I always have a theory, um, and a lot of people just will blatantly disagree with me, and that's fine. But... Um, when it comes to intelligence in dogs, you know, everyone's like, oh, the Border Collie is the smartest dog in the world. And some of these breeds like Malinois are the, the smartest dogs in the world. And I think they're smart dogs, but I think that they're just very biddable, right? They just really want to work closely with humans. Now, I think the smartest dogs in the world are like a husky that's going to escape an enclosure 50 times. And they just know that they can survive without you. Like they can do it. Good. They don't need you. Like to me, that's extreme intelligence. Yeah, oh, yeah everyone's like, good at different things, but it yeah. really amazed me. Yeah. And Annalise, if there's anything that you'd like to leave the audience with, um, we'd love to hear it. Um, I guess the, the thing that I would ask you guys to uh, r really consider um, is not just your uh, neighborhood you know, kind of rescue dogs, um, but really look at the dogs that might not, like, look at older dogs, look at uh, disabled dogs, look at um, breeds that you might not expect that you would want. Um, I think if you always go in uh, thinking that you want um, something very specific in looks, you might get that, but you might be disappointed on personality. Whenever I have someone that's like looking for a dog at the rescue, I don't jump to what breed do you want? I jump to what kind of dog do you want to live with? Mm. Okay? And then go from there. Um, because there are so many mixed breed dogs, those shelter workers have worked with them, they've lived with them. Um, they can find you a dog. And it, like I said, it might not be the dog that you want in looks, but it might be the dog that you need. Yep. Oh, I love that. That's good advice. Might be the dog that you need. Yes. So where can people find you, Annalise? Um, you can find you can find me on Instagram. I don't post there often because I forget. Um, mostly I post on TikTok, just silly little videos. Uh, and we are incredible trick dogs across the board on Facebook, on Instagram, on trick dogs or on TikTok. Um, in person, if you wanted to train, um, I am at All Breed Rescue and Training in Colorado. Um, 
Yeah. And I, I train dogs. I like training dogs, working with dogs. And earlier you mentioned Keller's cause. Um, we will put in our show notes um, all of this information so that uh, you guys can uh, follow Wink and Annalise and her, her other pack members as they enjoy life and uh, also Keller's cause and the website for all breed. Um, I love the fact that you are doing training within a rescue, that it's a co um, mission there, I guess that just seems very symbiotic, you know, it, it just seems perfect. Yeah. So as a rescue, our rescues are number one priority. Um, I'm not so much on that side of the, well, business, it's a nonprofit, but still, you know, the business. Um, one of the things that I love about the organization, though, is that, of course, we take dogs um, from the euthanasia list. We take dogs only from our own state, so we don't import dogs from other communities. We help the dogs that are in our community. Um, we find all the dogs fosters. At a minimum, every dog that we take in has to be in foster for two weeks before they go up to be adoptable. This creates a system where we know exactly how that dog is in the home environment. We know, do they get in the trash can? Do Are they potty trained? Um, do they like men, women, kids, other pets? Now, once we figure all that out, uh, we put them up on the website, they get to be adopted, or, you know, people apply to adopt them, we find them a home. Now, as a requirement, and it is free, it comes free, your dog has to take a basic obedience course or nice. go through the behavior side of um, our training programs, right? So they either have to do uh, a basic obedience course or go through a reactive dog class if that's the dog's issue. Because again, we do rescue dog from, dogs from the euthanasia list. Sometimes there are some dog issues there. So they have to complete that training in order for the adoption to be considered complete. Um, like I said, it's no cost to them. It comes with their adoption um, uh, costs, which are relatively inexpensive. We charge $250 across the board. It doesn't matter if you're getting a puppy uh, or an adult or a purebred or a mixed breed dog. They all cost the same. Um, and they all get the training uh, and attention that they need. Fantastic. I wish they all did that. Yeah, I wish we all, all rescues did that. Thank you, Annalise. That was wonderful. So great. Learned so much and really a fun chat. Yeah, it was great. Good talking with you, ladies. Thank you for being here. Yeah, take care. All right. Bye. I'll, I'll see you when I come to Colorado. Sounds good. All right. Bye. All right. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our show. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Petability Podcast. For more information about Kathy's books and living with blind dogs, please visit EnableYourPet.com. Thank you, and please tune in next time.